What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am the King Koopa. Thank you for stopping by. So I got a good little video for you today. We are finally tearing apart our 6.0 that is an LQ9 out of a Cadillac Escalade that is going to be getting swapped into our little black work truck that currently has the Cam 4.8 in it. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm really hoping for like at least a 40 to 50 horsepower gain just on the motor swap alone, but we are adding all of our performance mods on top of that. We're going to be tearing her down just to the block because I am keeping piston rods, crank, um, in the block, and that all is going to be sent off to the engine shop. I'm going to have them tear it apart, put new bearings in it, hone the cylinders, uh, put piston rings in it, and we're going to have them gap them for about a 200 shot of nitrous, so this should be a pretty quick little truck. We are using a Lincoln Felter timing delay box on that, so it will have two-step. So uh, hopefully this little 4L60E holds in there because I don't want to do a 4L80 swap anytime soon. I am going to tell you a couple tips along the video um, about parts organization and storage and stuff like that, so make sure you stay till the end. But I'm really happy to get started, so uh, thank you for watching, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for the future of the little black truck build. Let's get started. Now that we got the engine pushed outside, we got the seatbelt strap cut off, so that's gone. We did tape up the throttle body and the fuel line just to make sure no water gets up inside there. I'm not really too worried about the uh, bottoms of the exhaust manifolds. But we do have our two degreasers, the Gunk Engine Degreaser, the original, and we got some LPS. This is the Precision Clean. I'm not exactly sure how well this is going to work. My pops gave it to me, so we're going to test it out on the engine. Can't complain with free 99, so I think we're going to do half the engine in the Gunk and the other half in the Precision and see how well it goes. So we let that degreaser sit for about 15 minutes and then we took our wire brush to some of the heavy gunk areas and this thing is dirty. You can tell because they never took it to a car wash and got the underside of the vehicle washed because there is so much road grime and gunk caked on this engine. So now it's time to wash all that off. We got our hose with the jet setting since I do not have a pressure washer yet. So we just finished our first round of degreasing. I honestly think it might need a second round just to get that next extra layer off. But let's check it out. Let me know what you think. Not too bad. The heads are somewhat clean. Valve cover's looking good. The passenger side from the gunk got all that off. That side's still there. But when we come down to the oil pan, the gunk side is still pretty dirty and the precision side looks somewhat clean. The top valley area is still pretty dirty. Precision still has a bunch of grime in all the corners and the crevices. Gunk still does too, but I think a little bit less. First thing we're going to do is drain the oil on this engine. It was pretty dark. I used some aluminum foil just to make sure that I didn't get it on the engine stand. Next, we're going to be pulling off all the hoses and miscellaneous things we don't need. I did keep those hose clamps just in case. You never know when you might need one. And after that, we're going to pull off the harness. The harness was uh, cut in a lot of places, so we didn't need those. Moving right along, some of these spark plug wires were cut, so we're just going to junk those. After that, we are going to pull off the coil packs, and then we're going to move right on to the intake manifold. There was about 10 bolts holding the intake manifold on. Those do not come out. Then it just pulls right off the top of the motor. We then vacuumed a bunch of broken glass out. She was pretty dirty. Then we removed the old exhaust manifolds and the spark plugs. There was three broken exhaust bolts on each side. So we're going to have to grip those with pliers and pull those out. The spark plugs really didn't look that bad, so you can tell those are relatively new. So we're making pretty good progress, and we're about to start removing the heads and the valve covers first. But if you are going to be tearing the heads completely down, I would suggest getting this little tool. They're pretty cheap. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. But this is an engine parts organizer. So you can put all your rocker arms here, the push rods, and then you have room for both your valves. It does have labeled front and back so that it keeps it all nice and neat and for each cylinder. So one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight. So when you put it back together, everything goes in the exact same spot it came out. These are 317 heads, and since I already have the milled 243s that are going to be going back onto it, we are not going to be tearing these heads completely down because we're probably just going to be selling these on uh, Marketplace or something like that. So I will be removing the rocker arms and the push rods, but I won't have to remove the springs and the valves. Now we're going to remove the valve covers, giving us access to the rocker arms and push rods. We are going to remove those and store them in our little organizer tray. After that, we're going to break all the bolts loose, holding the heads on. Once we pull the heads off, you will have to remove the head gaskets, 
as well as the two center dowel rods in each corner of the block that center the heads on it. Next we move to the valley cover. Make sure you unconnect the knock sensors. Unscrew those first and then remove all the bolts holding the valley cover on. Then we're going to remove the oil pressure sensor and the cam position sensor in the rear. That's just held on with a bolt and an o-ring and pull straight out. Then we're going to remove the water pump. There are four bolts holding each motor mount on. The AC support bracket. To remove the harmonic balancer, you are going to need a three-jaw gear puller or a harmonic balancer puller. Then we can remove the front timing cover and remove that gasket. There are four bolts holding the oil pump on and one holding the pickup tube on. So we're going to have to remove the oil pan next to get access to that. There are three bolts holding the cam gear on, and then you can remove the cam gear and timing chain. Next is the cam retainer plate. I would just throw that away and get a new one, as the gasket is most likely bad. And now we have access to our camshaft that we can pull right out. Next is the windage tray on the bottom underneath the crank. And that is our last item to remove, so we have to remove it off the engine stand, put it on our cherry picker, and now we have access to the flex plate and the rear timing cover. And there is the finished teardown of our 6.0 motor. Now this would be exactly the same if you had the 4.8 or the 5.3. Um, very similar if you had the LS1 and LS6. Now this is not a 100% complete teardown as we still have the crank, the pistons, and the connecting rods in there. I am leaving them in there because I am dropping it off at the machine shop. It's just easier for me to transport it all together. And that way they can do a more in-depth inspection as they pull it all apart themselves because they're going to know a lot more than I do. There are plenty of DIY people out there that do their own pistons, wrist pins, connecting rods, um, new bearings, and all the stuff like that. But for me, the average Joe, sometimes it's easier just to pay the professionals to have it done, get it back a couple days later, and be on with the project. So, might be something further down the road. Uh, I would definitely like to uh, dabble in that and increase my knowledge, but as of right now, I'd rather have the pros do it. If you wanted to tear down the pistons connecting around the crank, it's pretty simple. All you would have done is kept the engine on the stand, rotated it over, and there are two bolts on the bottom of each connecting rod holding that connecting rod piston combo in, so you remove those two, and then you can tap the piston and the connecting rod right out of the cylinder. You will have to rotate the crank to get access to some of those bolts as uh, they are in different positions throughout the engine. Once you have all eight pistons and connecting rods removed, then you can remove the five main caps holding the crankshaft in, then that bad boy will just pull right out. Here you can see the five main caps underneath holding the crank in. <clears throat> Probably gonna put the oil pan back on with a couple bolts just so that way for the transportation. The uh, bed liner is not just sitting on the main caps, those bolts down there, or on the crank itself. I do not want to scratch that or damage that. This really wasn't that hard of a project, guys. I mean, pretty much anybody can tear this thing down. My biggest concern for anybody wanting to do this is obviously space. This does take up a lot of space. Um, I can't really pick this up by myself, so that way I have a cherry picker. And I did need an engine stand, which both of these do consume a little bit of space. I have my mad trash pile on the floor over there of all the parts that we are not using. I did all this with basic hand tools, I mean screwdrivers, pliers, needle nose pliers, we used ratchets, uh, rubber mallet at one point in time, and we did have our impact and a breaker bar. So, I mean, there wasn't really any special tools needed. This, we did have to go out and buy the universal mounting plate. This was pretty helpful to transfer it from the uh, engine mount to the engine hoist. If you plan on tearing your LS engine down, even if it's going to be for a day, you better have some good organization. You don't want to tear this engine down and then not remember where the bolts go. So that's why we have everything bagged and double labeled. So we have valley cover bolts, timing cover hardware, oil pump hardware, oil pan hardware, rear main seal, lifter tray, flex plate, cam retainer plate, windage tray, engine mount hardware. We got everything and it's labeled on the back. Sometimes just writing in Sharpie on the back of the bag isn't good enough because this stuff can rub or scratch off eventually. So that's why it's a good idea to have it with tape on the front because that won't come off. For the larger parts, I just have them set on the floor for right now. I do not have them labeled, but I also know where they all go. It's not really ideal, so that way I would suggest getting you a large storage rack just like this one. They do sell these at Costco for under 150 bucks and they are definitely worth it if you have the extra space. 
You can store a lot of car parts on here or a lot of other junk. I use this mid row for all my cleaning supplies and it's nice that they're adjustable because I can fit the shop vac underneath. I actually did pick this one up for free. It came with the frame itself, but I had to cut out my own plywood shelving. That is something I would definitely look into so that way you don't have all these big parts just sitting on the ground in your way. If you are serious about doing your own junkyard build or modifying your current LS motor, then I would highly, highly, highly suggest, no matter what skill level you're at, to buy one of these books. It's How to Rebuild GM LS Series Engines. This is a serious step-by-step -step book. There's over 600 steps in there. From teardown to break-in, stock rebuilds to performance builds. It has the torque spec sequences, even machine work advice, and every single engine measurement with the math. This has literally everything you need and will answer all the questions that you have. I think it was about like 25 bucks, but if I can find a link, I will link it in the description of this video. And I think that is a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're about to load her up into the truck and head over to the machine shop. I'm gonna wait for it to stop raining first. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me. Stay tuned for the rest of the build. Hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.